we just finished doing uh, some video clips of, uh, of that uh, one animal that stayed and it attempts to lift the dead one. It moves about uh, 10 or so meters away from the dead one uh, and then approaches it again and we're hearing echolocation type clicks. We're not sure whether that's truly for echolocation or as part of its, uh, its repertoire as it uh, is uh, apparently grieving for the dead one. looking for dolphins, striped dolphins, here in the Gulf of Corinth and uh, at some point we sighted one adult striped dolphin with a dead dolphin. We approached them slowly, trying to interfere as little as possible. We got closer and we realized that there were two dolphins. One was deceased, they were both striped and it seemed like the other one was trying to move it in a certain direction. It was fascinating to see how you know the dolphin would almost swim in circles around and almost you know pushing it up and at the same time it would even you know almost push itself on top of that dolphin and you could see the whole eyes and the whole side of it and as it went back into the water it would swim and it'd make another circle around in class we learned that dolphins they're very expressive with their eyes and as you know staring at it and looking at it it just it was very it was obvious, you saw that it was in pain, it was grieving. And uh, it, as, like now, now that it's been over an hour, uh, it's tiring, it's becoming exhausted, and it's, it just it hurts your heart. You're seeing it and it's, it's struggling, it's putting itself in danger. Self-preservation seems to have uh, momentarily left because it is grieving for its loved one and it gets you. When I saw this um, dead dolphin staying afloat and then the other dolphin is trying to flip it over, I, I was deeply moved because they're so like humans. And you know, it's just interesting to see, but at the same time I was saddened to see the other animal is trying to transport the dead body to that direction. For a, a pelagic creature like that is so highly unusual because they're scared to be alone. They're just not lone creatures. But this animal is obviously suffering. For these dolphins, uh, there's evidence for several species, and quite a bit has been written about this, of what's called epimeletic behavior, or helping behavior uh, that is not uh, directly nurturant or necessarily where uh, uh, one animal that uh, may help another adult animal or a sub-adult animal. Sometimes it's so strong that it leads over to attempting to help uh, a dead animal. It, we, we often call it uh, sort of anthropomorphic, but there you go. We often call it grieving, uh, and it seems like grieving. And these are large brains, certainly bright uh, animals that are very behaviorally flexible. So presumably, uh, the one or ones that are with a dead animal and know that their loved one, that their partner is dead, is gone, uh, but uh, don't want to take that realization, don't want to want to believe that and I think in human terms you can very well understand that. As in humans, you know, a good friend of yours, you know, is someone that you really do hold on to and it really does, you know, make you kind of upset and sick at the same time to see, you know, a creature like that, you know, having to deal with something like that and this whole grieving process has really been hard, I think, not just on me but on everybody. Yeah, it's, it's quite a sad, but I suppose quite natural situation. It was just really sad because I've never seen anything like that and you hear about animals grieving but to be that close to an animal that's actually grieving the loss of, like the loss of a, a loved one is just kind of emotional. We hope that you know maybe we will be able to understand these things a little bit better since this is, seems like it's you know one of the first times that you know we've seen this kind of behavior.